Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. So again, I'm here to talk about Simple Fuel, but I wanted to introduce my company first. Uh, PDC Machines is located in Pennsylvania. It's been around for about 40 years. We do diaphragm compressors. So diaphragm compressors have some advantages over uh, other types of compressors in that there's uh, contamination free. The hydrogen purity that comes into the compressors is exactly what's going to leave. So you're not gonna have a, a risk of damaging a fuel cell or, or uh, the vehicle downstream of the compressor. Um, additionally, there's lower maintenance because there are no dynamic seals in the compressors. Therefore, there's not friction that's created. There's not a lot of heat. And so we can do the compression in two stages where piston compressors usually take four or five. So since there's two heads instead of five, there's less maintenance. And then the last thing is that it's energy efficient. We're not creating heat that uh, is being rejected. And we also use a very big flywheel on the compressors so that it only needs a, a small trickle of electricity to keep the compressor going. So uh, you can see that there's a very large install base of our compressors, about 4,000 units in the field, and over 400 now hydrogen compressors are PDC. Uh, we have a very large market share, and uh, the, the growth driver for our company is hydrogen. So our clients are across the gamut of hydrogen, a lot of the big names that you see at Hanover this year. So among all of these companies, I think everyone is, is agreeing that we need to go bigger and bigger in hydrogen stations so that we can get more molecules of hydrogen through the stations and amortize the capital as much as possible. So you try to get the dollar per kilogram of hydrogen down. Um, but the, that trend you would see in electrolyzers going from one megawatt to five megawatt to 10 megawatt. Um, and, and you see this with Germany with 65 stations, Japan with 90 stations, California with over 60 stations. But the question arrives that what happens when you don't have hydrogen available? You know, what happens if a hydrogen station is 100 or 200 kilometers away? And if you're a developer, are you going to put that three or four or five million dollars of a hydrogen station in a location that doesn't currently have hydrogen fuel cell vehicles? So to answer that question, I think we have a solution. So we have a simple fuel product. It's a relatively new product that we're commercializing and it has the hydrogen production, compression, storage, and dispensing all in one um, small appliance. So you'll see it here. Uh, it has just electricity and water as the inputs. The outputs are only hydrogen and heat. Uh, we do 10 kilograms a day of production. And so you can see it's about the, the size of a forklift truck. It's smaller than a car parking spot. And it does have forklift provisions so that you can move it around. The idea here is that you are seeding the market. You are demonstrating that there's consumers for hydrogen so that it de-risks the development of hydrogen stations. Um, we're looking at two market segments. The first one is forklift trucks, where there are about 20, 22,000 forklift trucks that are running on hydrogen in the United States and Europe. We can put the simple fuel right into the work cell of the distribution center. Uh, so when you look at the OPEX of a distribution center, labor is the number one thing. It's not the forklift trucks, it's not batteries, but it's labor. So you wanna keep the labor in the work cell doing work as much as possible. So instead of having the forklift trucks drive every shift over to the corner of the DC and change out batteries, you can have the laborer just pull up to the, the simple fuel, dispense the hydrogen, get right back to work, and that's a huge productivity play. There's a lot of value there. The other thing is that we're trying to mimic the battery opportunity charging. So if you have a simple fuel that's located outside of an office building, for example, a grocery store, Somebody can go in, spend 15, 20 minutes, and they can top off their vehicle and get an extra 100 kilometers of range. So I'm gonna show you a, uh, an animation here that basically extracts the, the panels and lets you see what's inside. So starting off, we have an electrolyzer that's a 10 kilogram a day stack. Again, only electricity and water as the inputs. There's a deoxo where we vent the, the oxygen away from the simple fuel. The hydrogen is, is uh, purified to get rid of the water vapor, and now you have five nines purity, fuel cell grade hydrogen. It's compressed up to 450 bar and stored 
in onboard hydrogen tubes waiting for a vehicle to show up to be refueled. We have a control panel and cascade fill system, which will arrange the valves and, and uh, put the hydrogen on board the vehicles when they show up. So we can either do 350 bar with forklift trucks, or we can do 700 bar with cars. Um, so it's a mutually exclusive thing. It's 350 bar or 700 bar but there's uh, specific nozzles for each one of the, the vehicles that we can use. So we've built Simple Fuel with the, the thought in mind of cost reduction, of making the install as simple as possible, making it movable so that once you have demonstrated hydrogen consumption in the area and you can put in HRS in its place, you can move that to a no, new location where you can again show that hydrogen has a business case. So, uh, so if you look at the setbacks that are required between a hydrogen refueling station versus the simple fuel, it's, it's drastically different. Simple fuel is, is shown in, in the small orange box and this is drawn to scale. So if you compare a retail station that you would see in Germany to simple fuel, the setbacks are, are extremely small, about five feet or 1.3 meters. Um, this is a footprint comparison of a hydrogen retail station to the simple fuel that's located at our headquarters in Pennsylvania. Uh, again, the simple fuel is smaller than the Hyundai Tucson there. Its setbacks are minimal. It's put right up against the building. And, and uh, there's, again, 1.3 meters of, of a setback around the simple fuel. We work with Intertech to do the certification of the standards that are required for each geographic area. Uh, in Japan, for example, we've worked with KHK, and Intertech has come to our facility during the factory acceptance test and gone through all of our safety procedures to make sure that they can certify it. And they stamp the, the uh, ETL stamp right there at the factory, so that minimizes the amount of work that's done during permitting, during installation, and, and uh, reduces the, the commissioning time. So we do have automotive OEM support. We've been working with Hyundai for the last three years. We're also working with the other automotive OEMs as well. So I'm gonna go over the, the first four installations that we, we've got. First one is at uh, Pennsylvania at our headquarters. Uh, we've been working with the Department of Energy in the United States to develop this. We won the H Prize in 2016. Uh, during that year where we were demonstrating the viability of the simple field unit, we had over 300 events where the car was being refueled every single day. It operated outdoors and it performed very, very well. The second was in northern Japan during the great earthquake that happened. Their supply chain for LPG that they typically used for powering the forklift trucks was broken. And so they needed another way to fuel the forklift trucks. Since they had hydropower and solar electricity on site, they're using that to, uh, as the input to the simple fuel. And so they can use hydrogen to fuel their Toyota forklift trucks. The third one is at Greentown Labs in Boston. Um, this is located uh, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see it, it's right next to the building in the alley. We're going to be working with the OEMs, the, the majors. And what's a little bit different about this one is that it's also an e-charger as well. So Hyundai is going to be testing not only the Nexo, but also the Ionic. So it fuels both electric vehicles in, in battery and fuel cell. And then the last one was, was very recent. This was at the Toyota Automobile Factory in Japan, in uh, Toyota City. And this is uh, fueling the six forklift trucks that are operating within the distribution center. It was just commissioned last month. We're really excited about this. Again, the certifications that are required for Japan is KHK. It's probably the most stringent and extreme certifications. All of the components that are built inside of the Simple Fuel are PED and ATEX certified already. So C certification will be very easy and we're looking forward to our first installation in Europe. So I invite you to come over to D 
55, our booth, to talk further if you have any opportunities where we can seed the market with Simple Fuel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim Paterki. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes. Hello. Uh, seriously, when will you have a certificate? I can't hear you. When will you have a certification for Europe? When will we have a certification for Europe? Yes. You? We can do that during the process of uh, building the simple fuel. So, um, as you saw, we had 4,000 compressors in, in the fields. We already do PED, ATEX, machining directive, all that certification work. We do work with Intertech for diaphragm compressors as well, so we're extremely uh, familiar with that. And so we talked with Intertech at the very beginning of the, of the project. They identified the standards that we need to adhere to. Again, we already have PED and ATEX certified components within the Simple Fuel, so we're, we're very confident that that will be done during the manufacturing and factory acceptance testing of the Simple Fuel. Anything else? It, look, <clears throat> it looks like a standardized system, so I, am, I wonder, is there a standardized price for it? There is standardized pricing. It's uh, 450,000 US for the 700 bar unit and 430,000 US for the 350 bar unit. So if you look at this over a 10 year period and you use uh, 13 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the US standard, it comes out to be about 20 euro a kilogram. Thank you very much for the questions from the audience. So it sounds very promising. What do you think for the future? Where do you see, when do you think it will be commercialized in a, on it's, a large It's scale? commercialized now. Um, those, there's three commercial uh, products right now. And we're talking with many, many customers about some interesting applications. So I, I think you'll see a lot of uh, marketing uh, reports in the near future. Thank you. So the demand is high. I'm curious what high. you're going to tell us next year at the Hanover Fair. Thank I'll you very much update. again. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>